Alright, so today we're going to be talking about Nairo. Nairo is the largest streamer in the Super Smash Bros. Ultimate community, streaming to an audience of almost 300,000 subscribers. He's one of the community's most revered and loved figures, as he's friends with nearly every top player. He was formerly ranked 4th in the world as a competitive player before the COVID-19 pandemic. However, recently his name has been embroiled in controversy. This is because, in July 2020, Nairo was accused of having sexual contact with fellow player Captain Zack at CEO Dreamland 2017. At the time, Nairo was 20 and Zack was 15. Initially, Nairo would confess to the claims against him, only to recant his confession a few months later and come out with his side of the story denying Zack's allegations. After his statement, the community began to jump on Nairo's side and even got a hashtag trending number one in the world, campaigning for his return to the community. As a result, several tournaments and organizations would unban Nairo from their events. Many people would like to believe that the truth prevailed in this situation, as the king, who was unjustly slandered, reclaimed his spot on the throne. However, this is all BS. Today, we uncover the truth behind these allegations and expose the corruption and nepotism within the community. To understand what we're dealing with here, we need to examine the relationship between Nairo and Zack, because everything should fall right into place once we do. Starting in March of 2017, weeks before their encounter at CEO Dreamland, there are a series of five tweets where Zack and Nairo were publicly flirting. One, where Zack refers to Nairo as his husband, another, where Nairo tells Tweak, off my Zack or get the claws, and three more tweets where Nairo shows discontent and or jealousy at Zack finding attraction in other smashers. Repeatedly, instead of setting a firm boundary of what was and wasn't acceptable, Nairo would feed into this inappropriate relationship. Take for example the husband tweet. What do you think Nairo does in response? Does he A. Say stop, this isn't okay, B. Ignore him, or C. Like the tweet. There were even times when Nairo, completely unprompted, would talk like this with Zack. Look at this tweet and tell me what the insinuation is. For context, Ally was another adult that Zack was involved with in the community. This isn't an appropriate conversation to be having with a child, but I promise you, it doesn't end there. Here are testimonies from a few figures in the community describing their observations of Nairo and Zack's relationship. The first testimony comes from the top player Tweak regarding the weekend at CEO Dreamland 2017. Zack and Nairo had started flirting at this event specifically. When Zack went to go to Nairo's room the night they did sexual things, I specifically told Zack not to go. And he did, and did not come back that night. Tweak also provided DMs where he specifically told Zack not to go to Nairo's room that night, and also told him to not do things with him, whatever that could mean. The fact that Tweak, based on his own observations of their relationship, believed that Nairo and Zack doing things was a legitimate possibility should tell you all you need to know about their dynamic at the time. But it doesn't end there. We can also see Nairo's fangirl Paradin memeing about their dynamic. Who was the official ship, Zack? You and Sue, or you and Nairo? Nairo and Zack is basically canon. By the way, rip Nairo and Void. You and Nairo are a ship, okay? Friendship though, friendship though. It's a good thing she specified that this was just a friendship, or else I would have thought that something else was going on between them. Finally, we have this testimony from Salem. I assume Zack and Nairo dating was okay for reasons I just mentioned. They even had pictures together and were often together even cuddling at times. So I had no idea of anything. Though because of how things were oddly quiet about their relationship, I did later ask Zack if they were dating, and I was told from him that he doesn't know. As well, he made it sound like Nairo wasn't sure of a relationship, or that he was more interested in a girl. I mainly was interested in their relationship because it had the type of celebrities are dating type of vibe. Only later did I learn that the situation was something else entirely, as Zack again later told me he made the story up. I believed him foolishly even though I literally saw him laying down on Nairo's lap. Here's a picture of Zack lying on Nairo's lap. People ignore this part when discussing the Nairo case as if it isn't enough to justify a ban on its own, so it's important that we lay all of this out before discussing the actual allegations. Now that we're all on the same page here, let's get into the main allegation Zack made and hopefully, by the end, reach a verdict. Zack alleges that he and Nairo had two instances of oral sex in April 2017 at the tournament CEO Dreamland. When Zack's twitlonger dropped, Nairo confessed to these allegations and left the internet. He would return in October, claiming he didn't even write the confession and that Zack's allegations were false. His defense was that he did have sex with Zack twice, but it's because Zack raped him in his sleep the first time, then the next day, Zack blackmailed him into more sex. 
You know what? Let's pretend that Nairo is 100% telling the truth here. Okay, let's let me give him the full benefit of the doubt. How is any of this acceptable? Nairo, an adult, had been flirting with Zack, a minor, for several weeks prior, potentially even cuddling with him on occasion. He even let Zack stay in his hotel room that weekend. It is entirely Nairo's fault alone that he was this close with a 15-year-old to begin with. So realistically, none of this would have ever happened had Nairo just not flirted with a kid, which is already grounds for a ban. It's not like Zack was a serial rapist just going around sucking off random dudes on a whim one day. This sexual encounter, whether consensual or not, was the result and climax of an inappropriate dynamic that Nairo fed into. People just want to focus on the he got raped and is the victim part of his story, while ignoring all the steps it took for Nairo and Zack to get to that point. Of course, that only covers the first sexual encounter because remember, the next day, when Nairo was fully conscious and consenting, he agreed to have his dick sucked again. His defense now is that Zack gaslit him into believing the first encounter was his fault, which again, it was, and Zack used that as leverage to blackmail him into another sexual encounter. He claimed that Zack had him under his thumb, and he had no choice but to not get on his bad side. After all, it's not like Nairo, as the adult, had any other conceivable choice in that situation like, for example, not letting a child blackmail you into having sex with them. Like, Nairo could have literally paid Zack hush money, and it would have been, like, more ethically correct in this situation than to have sex with him. But you know what? Once again, I'm gonna be extremely generous here. Let's pretend that Nairo, from all the pressure and manipulation from a 15-year-old or whatever, truly believed at that moment that his only choice was to have sex with a kid. If you ever find yourself in a position where your only option to protect your reputation and career is to commit a sex offense against a kid, you probably already screwed up somewhere way before it reached that point. And once again, that screwing up was flirting with said minor for several weeks beforehand. Look, I get it, Zack is a lying manipulative brat, but at the end of the day, regardless of who initiated it, it's not Zack's responsibility to stop whatever inappropriate behavior is going on between the two. People in this community will say, what Nairo did was okay because Zack adult hunted, as if normal adults succumb to flirtatious advantage. Can you shut the- No matter what, any sexual activity that occurred in that hotel room is the fault of Nairo for not being an adult and setting the boundary weeks prior. I remember, um, actually a situation happened to me that was awkward. It was during Civil War, and this is something else I don't really like talking about. Is I remember Zach tried saying something flirtatious with me, right? And I just pushed him away immediately. I said no, and I stopped that immediately, and that was that. Because I knew that was not okay, and I knew this just needed to stop. And it wasn't like continued harassment or anything by him at all. He's a younger kid that was very, uh, open-minded. And I remember saying, no, this is not okay. And I had nothing against him for that at all. As the adult, it was my responsibility. Period. So it seems like Nairo got manipulated, though. That's the, that's the thing, though, bro. Like, he was 15, bro. Ain't no 15-year-old ever mixing me in life. You might mix me in the game, but you'll never mix me like that in life. <laughs> what the fuck? And this is assuming that Nairo is being 100% truthful with his statement, which there is still room to doubt that he is. According to Nairo, during their first sexual encounter, he yelled at Zack to stop, and when Zack refused, he pushed him off. So how, I might ask, did Zack end up back in the room the next day for the second sexual encounter? There are only two answers here. Either A, Nairo didn't kick Zack out of the room, or B, Nairo did, but let Zack return, which is basically the same thing. This is corroborated by both Samsora and Mr. R, who witnessed the two sharing a bed the following day. Sunday comes, and the tournament ends. Tweak left the tourney early that weekend, after being eliminated in the tourney early, and went back home. Mars, Mr. R, and I went to Nairo's room to chill after the tournament. When we got into the room, Zack's head was on Nairo's chest, which was strange. I was briefly in the room with Nairo and Zack before getting up to grab food, but was on my phone and didn't bat an eye at them sharing a bed since it's so normal at Majors. So you mean to tell me that Nairo was raped by Zack, but he also didn't kick him out of the room, was seen cuddling with Zack the following day, then they had sex again? Okay. The more I look into this case, the less Nairo's side makes any sense. And as I stated before, even if he's telling the complete truth, he's still the one at fault. His story doesn't actually make this better, and we still need to find out if he's telling the truth in the first place.
At the end of Nairo's post, his attorney Joseph Trey Flynn asserted that Nairo had a 30-page document of evidence that would ultimately exonerate him in a court of law. There are only four people who have seen the document, those being Alpharad, Cosmos, Void, and Paradin. They were so convinced by it that they would each post on Twitter supporting and vouching for Nairo's innocence. Yeah, let Paradin tell me that Nairo is innocent, that's a good idea. Many people in the community will tell you, well, everyone who's seen it has staked their reputation on Nairo's innocence, so there has to be something in there. Unfortunately for Nairo, I'm gonna have to call his bluff. You see, in Florida, where the incidents happened, statutory rape is a strict liability crime, which essentially means that the defendant is at fault regardless of their intentions or negligence. This is important because that would mean I was blackmailed into having sex with a minor is not a recognized defense by any Florida court of law. So to claim that this 30-page document could ultimately exonerate him is hard to believe if Nairo also claims he had sex with Zack twice. Because let's think about this logically. If his document was seriously foolproof, why not release it and clear everything up? Initially, Nairo claimed he couldn't release his document due to legalities and he was saving it for court, which, okay, sure, that makes sense. But on February 19th, 2021, Nairo posted an update video where he says, As many of you know, I've been handling things legally in the last half year, and I want to announce now that we've reached a legal agreement. So I just want you to know that as of now, everything is fully resolved and I am now able to move forward with my life. So if all of his legal issues are fully resolved, why not release any evidence that exonerates him? Considering all the skeptics skepticism going on and technicals breathing down his back, head. now would be the perfect time to drop the document and clear everything up. There's no reason not to at this point, unless I'm meant to believe that the details of his legal agreement with Zack prevent him from releasing the document to the public. In that case, that would mean that Nairo agreed to hide the document from the public. Now, I don't know about you guys, but if every corner of the internet thought that I was a pedophile, and I had a 30-page document of evidence that could completely refute the allegations, the last thing I would do is agree to bury it in a settlement. So between the shaky legal defense, the suppression of his magical document, and only showing it to his closest friends for them to publicly vouch, clearly something is up here. It gives off an I investigated myself and discovered I did nothing wrong kind of vibe. So there seems to be a common misconception among the Naifus that because Nairo reached a legal agreement with Zack, that somehow proves Nairo's innocence. So I want to clear this up by saying no. Nairo was not proven innocent by a court of law, he didn't even have any criminal charges filed against him, and he didn't even go to a civil court either, otherwise there would have been a public record of a lawsuit against Zack. This legal agreement was, well, just that. An agreement. It's a settlement. It doesn't prove who was right or wrong in the situation. It's just that both Nairo and Zack resolved the issue and they're gonna drop it. That That's all it means. No one was proven innocent. <laughs> they didn't even go to court. <laughs> It's weird how the randoms who go to bat so hard for Nairo don't even realize that not even Nairo wants them to see the evidence that supposedly exonerates him. And besides, even if there was some valid legal defense, that doesn't change how morally reprehensible Nairo's actions are. Even if Nairo is completely innocent of having sex with a minor, that doesn't exonerate him of the flirting and cuddling that occurred. So realistically, no, Nairo releasing the document wouldn't change anything. So now that we've covered every possible outcome for this situation, you'd be more than justified to be skeptical. And if Nairo isn't going to release the details of his document, then the safe play would be to ban him until he can sufficiently prove his innocence. At least, that's what anyone with common sense would think. To illustrate this next point, I'm going to reference this video by TK Breezy since he made many of the popular counter arguments regarding Nairo. TK has recently changed his stance on the case, however many people still make these points so it's important to debunk them. Somehow, the most common argument against ban Nairo isn't that he's innocent, it's that he can't go to tournaments anyway since he's banned on Twitch, so it doesn't matter. For anyone who doesn't know, if you're banned on Twitch, you're barred from streaming and can't be featured on other streams either. Apparently his thing is Nairo's not banned right now, but Nairo does not plan to go to any tournaments, at least to our knowledge. And on top of that, even if he does go to a tournament, it's a huge risk for the tournament uh, to have him there because he's banned on Twitch. Let's not forget that the only reason Nairo isn't banned is that the entire community, including including figureheads like TK, campaigned to get him unbanned at Smash events and on Twitch. 
So to say, he's banned on Twitch, so who cares, is incredibly dishonest. You're essentially saying, it's okay for us to fully endorse the return of a potential statutory rapist to the community because he can't go to tournaments anyways, which is a really dumb thing to say. Just because a third party issue prevents him from attending, doesn't change the fact that the current community stance is to welcome him back with open arms whenever possible. Let's also remember that Zero, a Smash content creator who retired from competitive play several years before his allegations, and is banned on Twitch, is not allowed at tournaments. We've also banned Colin Sweets Boldazar, who is currently in jail for decapitating his mother. Besides, if Nairo's not going to tournaments anyway, what's the holdup? What is the actual issue with banning him? It's not like it requires some complicated process that takes time and effort. All you need to do is put his name on a list. And somehow, the morally upstanding Smash community gets so upset and defensive anytime you suggest that a guy who had oral sex with a 15 year old should be banned from gaming events with children. But as we see, you'd only be against banning Nairo if you want to justify your campaigning to get him unbanned in the first place. At the end of the day, banning him has nothing to do with tournaments and everything to do with condemning his behavior. And when the community stance on a potential statutory rapist is to get his hashtag trending number one in the world while also complaining any time you mention it really shows how seriously this community cares about protecting minors. Now I want to divert your attention to the second reason why this whole unbanned Nairo trend is stupid. The Global Ban Database, or GBD, was a list run by tournament organizer CAG3000 that catalogued bans throughout the community. He presented it as just a reference and stated, the content of this database is not definitive nor does it have the ability to be enforced on its own. It is simply an asset for event organizers to help make their events safer and improve the well-being of the community. So the list in and of itself doesn't ban anyone. I myself can't say that X person is banned from every event. All I can say is I recommend TOs and orgs to follow this list or you know use this as a reference when either accepting or denying players at their events. However, CAG also acknowledges that the list was used by several organizations to enforce bans at their events, the most notable being VGBC, the largest tournament organization in the community. I can put him on the GBD like, yo, this dude kinda sus, and keep him away from the rest of the scene, aka majors and shit. VGBC has chosen to enforce the list at their events and also have other CEOs and orgs in the community. Okay, so by proxy, every time you put a name on that list, you were essentially banning them from all of those events, right? More or less, yes. Now when the allegations first came out, Nairo was added to the list. However, on March 15th, 2021, CAG decided to remove Nairo's name from the database. This is a problem because he clearly states in his document, it is recommended that those listed be barred from events unless substantial, unanimously agreed, conclusive evidence is shown that they are worth being allowed to attend again. This database is subject to change based on any new information released. Yet when asked if he had seen Nairo's 30 pages of evidence, evidence that supposedly exonerated him, he said this. I don't have all the documents and information regarding Nairo's case. I've never seen that document and I wouldn't be comfortable making a decision unless I have access to that document. So why was he removed from the list? By the rules and standards CAG laid out for the GBD, the only way he could have justifiably removed Nairo's name from the list is if he had reviewed the 30-page document and believed that it was conclusive enough to prove Nairo's innocence. And even then, I still don't think unbanning him would be the right decision considering all the evidence of Nairo's inappropriate behavior with Zack before any sexual conduct. So let's recap. Even when we take Nairo's statement at face value, there is more than enough room to doubt his innocence. Nobody has seen his magical 30 pages of evidence that probably don't even matter anyways, yet somehow the community insists on vouching for his innocence to their last breath. And honestly, I don't blame them. When every top figure is peddling the same propaganda for their favorite streamer, it can be very easy for their younger audiences to get swept up in the movement. I know, because that used to be me. But as I got older and looked into what was going on, I realized how disgusting this case was. A man who had two instances of oral sex with a 15 year old legally buries the allegations while his friends and top figures all vouch for his innocence. This is nepotism at its finest. Zero took a similar route to Nairo, only with far less severe allegations, many of which were false. He also actually sued Jisoo so there was a public lawsuit you could track, unlike with Nairo where everything was behind closed doors and out of 
of court. And after their settlement, Zero made an update video explaining the details of that settlement and his legal plans moving forward. He also plugged your boy. There was far more transparency in Zero's case, yet instead of being welcomed back and praised by the entire community, he was shunned, and rightfully so. So why does Nairo get a pass? If we actually want to uphold our 2020 promise of making this community safer for everyone in it, we need to do a better job and let it be known that stuff like this won't be tolerated just because he's banned on Twitch or he doesn't want to go anyways. At this point, there's only one thing left to do. Ban Nairo. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. And I'll see you guys next time.